As Jimmy and Rolf Wertherick sped up the grapevine, an open and fast stretch of road through the Sierra Madre Mountains, Jimmy pushed the car to its limits. Photographer Sanford Roth and racing driver Bill Hickman following them to the race in a Ford station wagon struggled to keep up. Both cars were well over the speed limit. Well, my name is Odie Hunter. I was uh, with the Highway Patrol for 31 years and I gave James Dean a citation for speeding a couple of hours or so before he was killed in 1955. About 100 yards or so behind him was a pickup truck towing a trailer and he was also speeding, seemed to be running together. So I made a U-turn on the highway, it was a freeway, and caught the two of them near Mettler Station, which is 20 miles south of Bakersfield. Good afternoon. After success on Broadway, Jimmy started to get regular acting work in New York, first in a series of TV roles, and then came his big break when he was spotted by Ilya Kazan and cast in Hollywood's version of John Steinbeck's East of Eden. How come you did it? Did what? Shot my father. Because he tried to hold me. He tried to tie me down. East of Eden was quickly followed by Rebel Without a Cause, the movie that made Jimmy's name as America's first delinquent teenager. The film's themes of juvenile rebellion and a tragic driving accident had eerie parallels with Dean's own early death. In Hollywood circles, there was a buzz about Jimmy, but to the outside world, he was just another driver going too fast. Do you have a driver's license I can get a look at, please? I looked at a driver's license, and it had his name and address on it, which wasn't familiar, because that was before his movie career had hit, a, hit the sky the way it did. But uh, I asked him where he worked. He said uh, Warner Brothers or some movie studio. I forgot who it was. You some sort of an actor? I advised him of what he was doing, that he was speeding, and he didn't have any argument about it. He knew that he was. And then he started talking about the car that they had just got the car in from Germany. Apparently it was working pretty well because it was running real well. How fast will this car go? Oh, clocked about 102 to 107 miles per hour. It's doing over 65, uh, I think around 70. I believe I wrote the ticket for 65. Okay, Mr. Dean, I'm going to have to give you a citation. If you bear with me, I'll be on the road in just a few minutes. Friday, September 30th, 3.30. As they drove away, Jimmy promptly laughed at the irony of what had just happened. Only 10 days earlier, he'd made a public safety film warning the youth of America about the perils of fast driving. I used to fly around quite a bit, you know. I took a lot of unnecessary chances on the highways. And I started racing, and uh, so now I drive on the highways and I'm uh, extra cautious. Because no one knows what they're doing half the time. You don't know what this guy's going to do with that one. On a track, there are a lot of men who spend a lot of time developing rules and uh, ways of safety. And uh, I find myself being very, very cautious on the highway. Jimmy continued to ignore the speed limit as he drove west on Highway 466. The Porsche soon left the station wagon far behind and it was shortly before five when they pulled into a roadside diner. Jimmy had spotted some race cars in the parking lot and was eager to speak with the drivers. As Jimmy sipped his final soda, he bragged to his fellow racers that he'd managed to get his Porsche up to 130 miles an hour. He was in a light-hearted mood as he joked that the tabloids would have a field day if they ever found out about his speeding ticket. You had a great sense of humor. You know, it depends upon what your sense of humor is, whether you appreciated his humor or not. But he, you know, he loved a good laugh and was a, was a prankster as well. He would remove his bridge, and he was toothless. And it was the most shocking thing, because here was this wonderful face and handsome, and then he would take out the teeth. And putting them in people's drinks when they weren't looking. 
and they'd look in their drink and they'd pick it up and my god and peace people would scream and the louder you screamed the more he'd laugh he loved to do that i set up this mock orgy that would uh, look like we were having this this uh this orgy but really wasn't at all he came over and it looked like this one was in this corner two people were in a, a bed or this, uh, nothing was happening and he stood in the middle of the floor unzipped himself and proceeded to masturbate dizzy broke into hysterical laughter and thought it was one of the funniest things she's ever seen and uh, he stopped out <laughs> I think more an embarrassment that she had laughed rather than in, you know, any, anything else. I said, Jimmy, uh, I met a lady today who knows you. She said that you were naked on the set at Warner Brothers. She said, I was. <laughs> I said, why? <laughs> you were? He said, yeah. Um, I was in my dressing room changing clothes. I didn't have anything on, and all of a sudden this guy walked in. He said it was my wardrobe man, but uh, I said, Ew! and I screamed and I ran out and I said, "There's, there's a man in my dressing room," and nobody laughed. He was emulating uh, Marlon Brando, and Brando at the time was the great naughty boy of theater and film, and Dean was determined to out Brando, Brando. Ella Logan gave a party one time where he <coughs> whipped out his and peed into a glass of, um, I guess it was scotch or something, in front of everybody. And no one thought it was funny. No one thought it was funny. It was 5.30 when Jimmy left the diner and drove off into immortality. The sun was getting low in the sky as the silver-gray Porsche continued west on Highway 466. There was little traffic on the roads that afternoon, but those witnesses that saw the Porsche all agree it was traveling fast. One person who claimed he did not see the Porsche was crucial to the events of the next few seconds. Donald Turnipseed, a 23-year-old student. At 5.45 p.m., he reached the junction that joins Highways 41 to 466. As he pulled into the center of the road to make a left turn, he paused momentarily and then continued straight across into the oncoming lane. Jimmy saw the car pause and then move across directly in front of him. As Turnipseed pulled forward, Jimmy said his final words to Rolf Werther. That guy's got to see us. He's got to stop. A split second later, Jimmy realized that Turnipseed wasn't going to stop. Another split second and Jimmy was frantically attempting to swerve round the car that was now on a collision course. James Dean's Porsche crashed into Donald Turnipseed's Ford at 5.45 p.m. on September 30, 1955. The 24-year-old actor was killed instantly, his neck broken and his body ripped apart by the impact, which catapulted the car along the highway. Miraculously, Rolf Wertherick survived with over 20 broken bones as he was thrown into the roadside. Donald Turnipseed suffered only minor bruises. My name is Joy Gorelli. I was working as a police clerk at the Pass Robles Police Department at the time of the James Dean accident. This call was just a call that there was a, a bad accident out at the Y. As far as I know, my call was the first notification to the highway patrol. Unless somebody had stopped one of the other cars out on the highway. But I do know there were several highway patrol cars there eventually. You think you 